Do you want to learn malware analysis, but don't want to watch those 5 hour long videos because you have the attention span of a TikTok adult troglodyte who can't watch anything if half the screen isn't Subway Surfer gameplay? Don't worry, I'm like that too. So I made this crash course for all you ADHD dopamine addicts. This is a new series I'm starting on this channel, and by the end of the series, my goal is to be able to train someone with the intelligence of a Skyrim bandit in the art of malware analysis. Never should've come here! First, why do we want to analyze malware? Why the hell not? Analyzing malware is fucking cool, dude. Nothing better than finding a virus in the wild and learning how it works inside and out. What makes it tick, what fetishes it has. Oh, I'm getting off topic. Fuck. Okay, uh, so we're... We're gonna set up two virtual machines in this video, which is going to be the entire premise of the first video in the, in, uh, in the series. So grab your notebook and put on your learning hat and pay attention. The fuck? What, <laughs> what even is a learning hat? Alright, first we're gonna set up a Windows 10 virtual machine and install Flare VM on it. By the way, this works on Windows 11. I just, I just, uh, man, I really hate Windows 11. Why is the Windows logo centered? Why? Oh my god, that bothers me so much. Do you know that? the logo placement is quite literally the only reason that I haven't upgraded to Windows 11. If you could even fucking call it an upgrade. So anyways, choose whichever Windows you prefer for Flare. Okay, what the hell is Flare? Flare VM is a pre-configured Windows-based virtual machine designed for reverse engineering, malware analysis, and shit of that caliber. Actually, <laughs> Let me just read the description from the developers who actually made the thing. A collection of software installation scripts for uh, for Windows systems that allows you to easily set up and maintain a reverse engineering environment on a virtual machine. In the parentheses VM, Flare VM was designed to solve the problem of reverse engineering tool curation and relies on two main technologies, Chocolatey and Box Starter. Chocolatey is a Windows-based new new gay package <laughs> nugget new gay. New, NuGet package management system where a package is essentially a zip file containing PowerShell installation scripts that download and configure a specific tool. Boxstarter leverages chocolatey packages to automate the installation of software and create repeatable script, scripted Windows environments. So, so uh, all that to say, we're using Flare because it's fucking awesome and it has a bunch of pre-installed tools that we can sing our teeth into for malware analysis. We'll cover s some of those tools later. Alright, first make a Windows 10 virtual machine. I really really hope you know how to do this otherwise why the hell are you watching this video but on the off chance you have no goddamn clue what you're doing get a windows 10 iso file from microsoft website and open up your vm software i'm using oracle virtualbox then create a new machine and set it as windows 10 64 bit and add the iso file also make sure the storage is at least 70 gigabytes once you're on the install screen, disable your internet through the settings so you can skip the part of the setup where you're required to make a Microsoft account. Then the most essential part of this entire tutorial. Hi there, I'm Cortana. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there. Mute Cortana's annoying ass. I swear, a little shut up here and a little mute there and I'll never be seeing you again, Cortana. Genuinely, fuck you. I'm sorry. Okay, you should now be on the fresh Windows 10 or 11 virtual machine. Now before we install Flare, we're gonna need to do a couple of things. And what that is, is permanently disabling Windows Defender and automatic updates. Oh yeah, you can re-enable the internet on the virtual machine now. Just follow everything I do. Hit Windows plus R and type gpedit.msc. If you get this error, the one that, like the one that I got here, we just have to enable it. So open up a command prompt as an as a administrator and run both of these commands. You can get the command to copy and paste by looking up the commands to enable gpedit.msc or in the description I've made a document with every single command required in this video. They have timestamps and it's all been made very easy so you could just copy and paste them from there. Once that's enabled, just open gpedit.msc with the same method I mentioned before. Once you're here, navigate to administrative templates, Windows Components, click Windows Defender Antivirus, and double click Turn Off Microsoft Defender Antivirus and set it to Enabled. Then go into Real Time Protection, do the same thing for a Turn Off Real Time Protection. Okay, that's the Windows Defender disabled. Now we have to restart the machine and check Windows Defender to see if it's disabled. And it's not. Of course, Microsoft, they, they just, they really hate if you mess with anything, 
anything that isn't the default settings for, for their stupid operating systems. I genuinely, I genuinely hate them so much. This will work for some people, but not for others like me. So open a Windows PowerShell as, a, as administrator and change your directory to your desktop. What we're gonna do now is create a PS1 file. So open up Edge. Fucking Edge, dude. Open up Edge. Yeah, said no one ever. Open up Edge on your virtual machine and uh, type disable-defender.ps1 in the search bar and hit enter. The first link should be this GitHub page, so just click on it. Alright, once you're here, copy the link and go back into your PowerShell and type curl and paste the link. Then dash O, which means output and then disable-defender.ps1. The file should now be on your desktop. So now we run the file by typing uh, dot backslash disable-defender.ps1 backslash. And for some reason the curl command formatted my PS1 file wrong, so if you got the same error I did, just open the file on your desktop by double clicking it and press Control A, just delete fucking all of it, just nuke the whole thing, and go back into your browser and hit this little copy button here on the GitHub page and paste it into the file you just nuked. Make sure you save it. Now just run the file on PowerShell like before and oh fuck yeah, okay. All right, now that worked. I swear Windows tries so hard to not let you disable anything, especially with this next step because now we have to disable the updates, which is a fucking nightmare. I did like three or four different things to get this thing disabled and I'm not really sure which which one was the step that actually disabled it? So we're just gonna run through everything I did real quick. Just do all of them. So back in gpedit.msc on the left, scroll down to Windows Update and click it. Then double click Configure Automatic Updates and set it to Disabled. Then hit your Windows key and type Services. Hit Enter and find the Windows Update service. Right click it and press Stop. But wait, that's, that's not all. Because if you right click and go into Properties, it's still running. Fucking Microsoft, man. Jesus Christ, man. So you have to go into properties and also stop it from there because god forbid Microsoft makes anything simple. From there I hit the windows key and typed updates to see if any of this worked and I still saw updates that wanted to be fucking downloaded. Jesus Christ. So we're pulling out the big guns. We're gonna edit the registry so hit windows plus R and type reg edit. From there navigate through local machine, software, Microsoft, windows and then right click that windows folder and hit new and create a key. Name it Windows Update and it has to be exactly spelled like this with the capital letters in the exact same spots. Then on the key we just created, create another key inside of it called AU in all caps. Then inside the AU key, right click and hit new and create a 32 bit D word value. Name it no auto update in the exact same fucking way that's on the screen. Double click it and set its value to one. Okay, let's check if it worked. Oh my God. All right, hit your windows key. Open a windows PowerShell as administrator and type these two commands and don't spell the second one wrong like me. Okay, let's see if it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to crash out, man. Okay, the funny part in all of this is uh, all you have to do is restart your virtual machine. Um, because after I restarted my virtual machine, then checked it, it, um, it, it, it said this error, which, which means it worked. Something we did earlier worked. And I'm not really sure if one thing made it work or everything combined made it work. I just know fucking something worked and we can finally install Flare. So if you're still here and haven't given up, then hats off to you. But before we do all that, create a snapshot of your machine so you don't have to do all of this ever again. All right, now go back into an administrator Windows PowerShell and navigate to your desktop like before and either manually type this command, copy and paste it off the Flare GitHub page or copy and paste it off my document. You do you, man. Then unblock it by typing this command and then set the execution policy to unrestricted by typing this command. Now before we run this installation script we're gonna take one more snapshot of our virtual machine in case uh in case the flare install fucking 360 no scopes our virtual machine and we have to do all this over again like me. Yes this is my second time doing this and also the reason why I'm making snapshots every three milliseconds. Okay in that PowerShell type uh dot slash install dot ps1 and flare will begin installing. At some point you're gonna get a, a, a little GUI, a, a, a cheeky little GUI. Just hit continue then on the package selection pick what you want. I, I fucking picked all of them. I'm not gonna lie I picked every every last single package because I'm just a tall handsome funny beast like that. So I hit select all and then install 
The install will occasionally ask for your password, so if your virtual machine user doesn't have a password, any, like mine, anytime it prompts you for a password, just hit enter. There was one time where it was really scary because it asked me for a password like like three times, and no matter how many times I hit enter, it uh, it kept asking for one, but I, I just hit enter enough times and then the installation continued. Oh yeah, also your virtual machine is going to reboot multiple times during this process, so don't be alarmed. Okay, now I want you to strap in. If you thought downloading Red Dead Redemption 2 on the 15 kilobyte per second download speed internet was long, then uh, then oh, you are mistaken my friend. Get ready for the longest installation you've ever done in your entire life and ever will do in your entire life. I literally had time to go to the gym, clean my car by hand with a sponge, salt a steak for 30 minutes to draw out the moisture so I get a nice, like, you know, a nice char instead of it being gray. Then, uh, then I grilled that steak and I ate it. And it wasn't no bitch made steak either. It was a, it was a 1.6 pound thick cut ribeye. So, so it took a while. It, it had some heft to it. After that, I took a shower and the install was still not done. So then I went to sleep and woke up about two hours later to piss and then, uh, and guess what? The install install was still not done. After I woke in the morning, it was done. I don't have an exact figure of how long this install took, but the point I want to make is that it's going to take a while, so so once you start the install, go jerk off or something. Hell, jerk off 10 times in a row, you've got nothing but time, man. You'll know your install is done when it says type enter to exit. And look at that, we got our beautiful flare background reminding us that our internet is uh, is on. This video's purpose is just to be the installation and setup of flare and remnux, but <sighs> I just, I can't resist. I gotta take a little peek in these tools. Look, we have fucking, we have everything, man. We have debuggers. Uh, we have, we have disassemble. We, we have fucking Ida in here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have fucking Ida. Ida is in here. <laughs> fucking family guy. This is so cool, man. I just, I, I can't wait to dive into all this stuff. But for now, just take a goddamn snapshot. Because unless you want to, unless you want to do this again, be my guest. All right, now on to making our Linux environment. So... We're gonna download Remnux. Remnux is a Linux distribution which was built specifically for malware analysis and reverse engineering. Head over to remnux.org, click download, then download it under VirtualBox OVA. This is a pre-built installation and all we have to do is import it into VirtualBox. Once it's downloaded, just right click and open with VirtualBox. After you finish that, start up the machine. And Once you're in Remnux, just type sudo remnux upgrade. And this will upgrade your machine. Good, you should now have both Flare and Remnux installed. So now we're gonna isolate both of these machines on a separate network to protect our main computer. Oh, I, I, I need the whiteboard to illustrate this point. Basically, we're isolating Redmux and Flare in this isolation area, pictured, pictured here in this little fucking square. This will allow both of our virtual machines to talk to one another in their little isolated bubble here without the ability to talk to our main operating system. See these these little lines they can't make it out of the box. You you get it. Think of it like the peanut allergy table in your school cafeteria and your two virtual machines are there while your main OS is eating peanuts at the cool kids table. Okay, so to make our peanut free table, we're going to click on the three bullet points with the little three uh, lines next to it. And then uh, once we click that, click network, hit create, then change the IPv4 to something completely different from your host. I'm doing 10.0.0.1. Then in DHCP server, I set the server address to uh, 10.0.0.2. The low Lower address bound will be 10.0.0.3 and the upper will be 10.0.0.254. Then go to both your virtual machine settings and go into the network tab. Notice how its uh, default is NAT. You you don't want this, like at all. Remember that whiteboard illustration I made? Basically leaving NAT on is allowing traffic from your uh, malware testing environment to send data to your host computer. So like that that line I made earlier, it would be able to go through the box instead of instead of being stopped by the X. Which is the last thing you want from a virtual machine detonating malware. So switch it from that to host only adapter and set it to uh, to the adapter you just created. And do that on both of them. Verify you can't communicate outside your machines by uh, trying to ping Google. Or like, or like Bing if you're chill like that. Then to verify both machines can ping each other. Once you're done with that, we're gonna make a stimulated internet uh, fucking thing. It's called iNetSim and it's on Remnux. 
Since we have no internet, Remnex will basically act as a sort of internet simulator. So the virus which we detonate on Flare VM will think it's the internet and will send all of its requests to it. But in reality, it's a honeypot and we're going to be able to analyze every little thing it tries to do. So I hope my crudely drawn diagrams help. This whiteboard was $200 by the way. Anyways, head over to uh, your Remnex terminal and just type sudo nano uh, etc inet sim and then inetsim.conf and hit enter. Why am I using Nano as my go-to Linux text editor? Because it's genuinely the best one and nothing you'll say will change that opinion. Okay, in the conf file, scroll down to uh, to the start service section and delete the hashtag on start service DNS. So the service starts instead of being recognized as a comment. Then scroll down to service bind address, delete the comment tag before it and change the IP address to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. .0. Then scroll down to where it says service DNS and delete the comment tag for DNS default IP and change the IP to the IP of your Remnex host. If you don't know what it is, then open another terminal and type IPA. And it's gonna be the second one here. After you do that, hit control O, then enter then control X to exit and save. Man, I love Nano. Okay, now type inet sim in the terminal and the simulation will be running. You're gonna do this every time before you run malware on Flare. It's basically like you're placing the malware in its own matrix simulation. So it thinks everything is the internet and uh, it, in reality it's all simulation and, and fucking the malware is Neo. And, 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 and you force feed it blue pills every, every three seconds so it could never wake up. Make sure it's working properly by going on the browser on the Flare machine and typing in your Remnex address from, uh, from when we typed in I, IPA. If you see this page, it's good. Also go into your network connections and double click Ethernet adapter and hit properties and click IPv4 and change the DNS server and change the address to the Remnux box. This will make it so any website you try to access will always serve out the fake HTML page. So this is now a fake DNS server which will allow us to get a nice juicy list of every domain name of malware we detonate will call out to. Isn't that fucking awesome? So you could type freedildos.com and boom, I net same HTML page. You could type any domain here and it will always go here. Good job! You can now detonate malware on Flare and get to analyze and recording what it does. The first part of my malware analysis series is now done. If you don't want to wait for me to make the next part, then by all means, go blow your machines up with malware. I mean, you've taken snapshots, right? You're totally safe. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Take... Take a snapshot of both Remnux and Flare now, like, like right now. Also take a snapshot right before you detonate malware. Good luck, soldier. You're on your own now, or at least until I make part two. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Next video, we're going to actually detonate malware and showcase some of the power of the tools that lie in Flare's directories, as well as uh, go through the process of recording like and documenting what malware does. Also, huge fucking thank you for 1,000 subs. I did not expect to hit that in my first two months of making videos. It's genuinely tremendous and I honestly don't even have words to, to, to describe how, how amazing I feel and how great I am. <laughs> I'll get to work on that Google dorking vid so you guys can stop fucking asking for it. Until then, I'll see you. Thank you. <laughs>